All right. Praise God. This happy, bright, sunshiny day. And what a second. <coughs> All right. We made it out of Pride Month. So now we have joy. That's what we're going to talk about today. Once again, praise God the music right on time. The song is called Bring, Bring It On. Uh, and then the, the Johnny Cash version of, uh, we'll have to look it up. Anyway, good, good music this morning. Praise God. Good time of fellowship here at the TA Chokes Off in Wilcox, Arizona. Uh, if you're watching us today, remember that there's a big picnic, picnic in the Wilcox Park. Uh, from like 3 to 7. So come join us. Today we're going to be in John 15. Uh, just one verse instead of going through a whole bunch because uh, uh, 1511 says where Jesus is talking, this is all in red. This is about, it starts in verse 9. It says, love and joy perfected. And that's one thing about it is whenever they put this together, uh, I forget what they call it because the Bible originally didn't have chapter and verse and all the breakdowns in, inside of each chapter. But I, I would show one time, if you just read the book of John and just what we call the headlines, just go into every, the black italicized words, like it says the gift of his great peace before that. And then chapter 15 starts out the true vine and then, 59's love and joy perfect. Just read the headlines. It'll blow you away, man. You see how exactly in order God had to bring this word in order for people's hearts who who were in a world full of sin and were used to it. How their hearts need to receive it and receive it like piecemeal at a time in proper fashion. It's really neat when someone showed me that. Like, wow, the grace of God is very long-suffering and very merciful towards us. That he really wants us to get, that he loves us, and he did something for us. Uh, you know, because we spoke of peace uh, last week and kind of the week before. And uh, and I was suggesting if you stop and pray for peace, it could be received now. Because that's one of the many things that God's desire for us is to have peace. Uh, peace being one of the fruits of the Spirit. There in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And God's desire for us. Oh, hang. <coughs> oh, I might get rid of it. I just want to have that handy. I forgot to get it. That uh, the fruits of the Spirit is, you know, love and joy and peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And like I said, when you read the headlines of the Bible, you see that those things, and it's really, you know, we really get to see the heart of the Father. You could say, and they came out of the the, the, the love and the words of Jesus. Um, so God's desire since creation was peace with him. And we all know that he got messed up, you know what I'm saying? And we understand why. Uh, today, was funny, we were talking about this earlier, any open opinion of God, either while uh, talking with just folks wherever, or on so, any social media, it'll get you a debate going. <laughs> you know, that either there's no God, or he don't care. I had one just the other day. Well, God don't care if he cared about disease and, and child cancer, and blah, blah, he'd, do something about it. I'm like, he did 2,000 years ago. He, okay, who set up the Brain Cancer Institute that we sent our loved ones to, right? Or, or the, the Cancer Institute of America. You see the commercial? That was set up, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, or I don't, I don't know when it was made, right? That'd be like you pissing them on and complaining. Why don't someone do something about brain cancer? Well, they did like 40 years ago when they built the building. Right? People don't say, why would God do something? Well, he did 2,000 years. He, he sent the healer, the great healer, the doctor, and the Holy Spirit, and the cross. 
You know, it's, it's not that God's wrong. It's that we're wrong. Right? It's that we're wrong in our speech. So, uh, yeah, we can get into these de debates. Uh, but folks don't want to believe, but at the same time, complain about what they don't believe. Right? Uh, like I was saying about that, that lady that wasn't even aware that there was such things as social credit in China, and if you didn't do right, and you talk bad about the government, they they make, they check the box that you're wrong until they, you, your credit score of being bad was bad enough they come get you and throw you in jail. She was completely oblivious to that. Well, people are acting the same way. China's there. We know China's been bad. We know China's been a bad regime forever. But if people are they're blind to even a world concept of of a totalitarian government like China. And they have no concept of it. Well, how are they going to have a concept of a God? But it's there. God's all around us. Go ahead, brother. Sit down. Appreciate you. Good morning. God bless. So, you know, what stops mankind from just receiving the free gift? And that guy yesterday during Mike, and I want to shout out to Mike and Maxine for their, their wedding yesterday. We love you guys. God bless you. But the, the one gentleman in the brown suit, he, did you notice when the kids were getting gifts from Mike and Mike was hugging him, he made that point about, it's just a free gift. And all Mike, Mike had a gift in one hand and a, a hug in the other, and they, they walked right up and they just took it. There was no debate, there was no concern. There, it was love, the, the love, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, that's, that's salvation, folks. He ain't asking you to do nothing. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, that the, Mike's, open arm and gift in one hand and then they're 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 uh they're just uh like jesus is the image in the one where he's a lamb because the lamb is so easily accessible there's there's nothing that deters you from wanting to go and touch a lamb oh look at it right nothing a lion an alligator you know what i'm saying my big head it's just there's certain things that make you stop and not want to just touch certain things but a lamb you're you have to go I can't think of the word, Mike. You have no reluctance, I guess, to, to touch it. And he's, Mike was standing there with a gift and a hug, and there was no reluctance from the kids when they were joining families at the wedding to receive his gift. It's sin that causes us to have reluctance to receive the free gift of Jesus. And you're not your sin, and sin is not you. God did a work that you don't have to have that sin no more. <laughs> Praise God. Right, and he's trying to give you this free gift. So that kind of, that's what it was just. The Lord is giving these words, and I was saying all through the week, he was giving me joy. And we saw weddings, and and I had my children with me, my son-in-law Eric and my daughter Kaylee. And it's like their ten-year uh, anniversary of being together, and uh, you know, just a lot of joy going on right now. So uh, uh, the Lord had me already thinking about joy, and I wrote on joy, and we're talking about joy again this morning, even before church. Uh, so praise God. So uh, let me find my spot there. And uh, the gift is it's also just not a one-time gift. The gift of salvation, you know, it's like, okay, you're saved now. And Jesus says, well, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, we get the Holy Spirit. We get fellowship with one another. We get comfort from friends as they share their word with us and their life with us and, 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 you know, and vice versa. Praise God. It, it's just... It, it's a gift that doesn't fade or cannot be lost. If you're truly in the Holy Spirit, born again, it, it doesn't fade. As long as, long as we choose to, uh, uh, to stay in, the, abide in the vine of Jesus Christ, it, it won't fade. Now, we can, we can walk away, but it's, it's like we say in AA. Once you get some AA and you, it messes up your drinking, the A doesn't fade. It might fade a little bit, but it doesn't go away completely. You know, but this doesn't fade away. We can walk away from it, but uh, but His love and His compassion that is in us, His joy. Uh, man, it, if it's there, it's, you're stuck. You're stuck like Chuck. You don't want it, nothing else. That's why I said A A really didn't mess up my drinking. It messed up my peace. You know what I'm saying? Because I would act the way I did when I was drinking and drugging, and it was not very peaceful. So I knew about the program at the time. Well, today, 
the Holy Spirit and being born again is the same way. It's not messing up my sin to want to sin. It's that whenever sin nature wants to come up, that messes with my peace and my joy. And I don't want no part of it. Because I've tasted the Lord and seen that he is good. <laughs> so why would I want to act that way and talk that way and, 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 and piss and moan about everything and have so much wretch, wretched stuff going on? I can choose today with the sermon and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and, and good counsel. That one verse we read, was it Proverbs 20, 13, or whatever was it, Mike said, uh, it was abundance of good counsel. You know, we have to hang out together. We're, we are not an island. We're not self-disciples. Because when we do that, we can have this joy. So we seek first God, and that we and we seek it from, uh, oh, we, we seek uh, fruit, and we seek peace. But without God, we seek it from every other outside source. We are designed to have fellowship with God, and he is the provider wholeheartedly of true peace and true joy. And no matter how opposite your opinion is, how blue your hair is, you even want to have peace and joy in your life because you're built that way. But apart from God... We'll seek it through like every kind of guru, uh, a medicine man, a soulmate. You know, like when we're Mike and uh, uh, Maxine got married and we're uh, talking to them, and you know, one of those things the world came up with was soulmates. Well, we're not soulmates, but you see what I'm saying? We we seek that stuff out, but because we're uh, built that way, and you know, we also, but some of us. We, we're trying to seek uh, joy from a, like being an agen adrenaline junkie. Uh, we see, uh, and we seek joy and Jesus the way that J Jesus seeks us. When you get that, that's what happened. That's why I finally got born again. Is I started looking at myself the way that he looks at me. And how... That's why I was debating the guy when he said God's not real and he's not worried about child cancer or nothing. Uh, but how does he seek us to make us better? I did not have a proper understanding of the joy that Jesus was trying to give me as this free gift today. And to get out of the cancer or the hatred or whatever you want to call it. The, the depression, anxiety. So uh, in this verse... I'll read it again. It was verse 11, John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you, so Jesus gave us his word, that my joy, capital M, talking about him, may remain in you and that your joy may be full. He just didn't say, now you're saved, good luck with that. <laughs> it wants this full joy. and It's all part of being in the body of Christ. So in this verse, the reference is as his life was to do the will of the Father, that will, uh, that, that, uh, that kind of will was to bring God's creation back to him. And when we turn to, to faith in God, through Christ alone, it brings Jesus' joy. Because now we want to share the work of God and the gospel with you out of love to give you joy. We're not, we're not trying to debate with you that there's a God or not. We're not trying to debate to you whether or not the book of Exodus is true or not. We're, we, we get up here and we tell you with loving kindness and mercy and peace and the things took away my picture. The love, the joy, the peace, the forbearance, the long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We talked about that earlier too. We're trying to share these things with you that can only truly come from God when you turn to God. We're not judging you because you have a lifestyle. We might tease you because we love you. Like I said, we just praise God we just made it out of, we escaped you know, Pride Month. It's just a joke. You know, because our desire... I bust all my friends' chops. I try not to do it too much because I get in trouble uh, running my mouth. But I have joy, and I'm happy to see you. 
Jesus was happy to see the, Je the Jew, the Pharisees, the Gentile, and the Roman. Think about this. The Lord told me one time, he said, okay, Christ knowing everything, right? Knowing all things at several different places. It just what he showed me, it's not in the word, but he just showed me Jesus at some point walking the streets full of the Holy Spirit bumped into the Roman soldier that was going to drive nails in his hands. Think about that. Don't you think he knew who that cat was and what he was about to do? <laughs> and, he, and he forgave him already. I mean, that, that, that's, the, that's the joy. He was happy to see the guy. That might have been the dude that was, you know, fell on one of, the, one of the many people they talked about in the Bible that on that day they turned. It says in the book of Acts that the people that were there that day, speaking of the day of crucifixion, it says many of them that day, the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees who weren't there and the Romans, on that they turned. They turned into the, their faith into God. So Jesus bumped into him like maybe the first month into his ministry. Three years later, that guy drives nails in his hand. But he joyfully saw him on the street because <laughs> he loved him regardless of his sin. We really love you regardless of your blue hair and your opinion on us. We don't care. We love you anyway. We don't care. <laughs> and I'm going to bust your chops because I love you. You know, it's, it's a biker thing. I, I try not to do it too much anymore. My wife doesn't like it when I do it to her. You know, but uh, it's, a, it's a love joy thing. We uh, One of the 1% uh, biker presidents one time, he's like, Gus, just... Leave that motorcycle right there. Just throw the keys in it and walk home. And they bust your chops. They want to see where you're at. Because if you start pissing them on and kicking rocks, <coughs> stupid, you know what I'm saying? They, they got you. I just like, I'm like, Philip, you don't want this bike. I just threw my leg over it. Because <laughs> that's what he was looking for. He lovingly bust my chops. Where other people will either get so scared they would do it and they're not going to respect them no more, or someone's going to get so pissed off that they're going to start cussing like sailors and they're not going to respect them no more. You know, <laughs> I, he want, he was digging he was digging at me, but he, <laughs> if he didn't like me, he wouldn't talk to me to begin with. We say that in the biker world. If they're not talking to you, they don't like you. We will talk to you, we'll debate you all day, we like you and, and we love you, no matter what your counter-argument is. <laughs> because we want to be like Christ, and his joy was to do the will of the Father, to bring his creation back to God. You're his creation today, no matter what color your hair is and what your opinion is of God. So this joy is our joy today. And when we stop playing church, and get into being the body of Christ, we are the hands that hold out the gift. We are the hands that give the hug. We are the mouth that speaks the truth. <laughs> We're all part of the body of Christ. You know, and you cannot be a part of the body and a foot cannot say it has nothing to do with the, with the leg. It, we all are a part of the body and the body is of joy. So this is what I share with my brother, James 1, I'm trying to get it marked. No, I, I got it on my phone. That's what I got. I'm, I say I'm smart today. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yes. James 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says, My brethren, count all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. You can have blue hair and opposite opinion, but the testing of my faith brings patience. Because patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And Jesus had patience with the Roman who he probably saw him several other times after he bumped into him the first time. What if at any time he snapped at him? He carried a grudge or a resentment. I know what you're going to do to me. Get away from me. Right? That's what we do. But count it all joy as you fall into various trials. You're not going to stay there. Knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Bring it on, right? That's what it's saying. It's like they, they, we, we, that song, Curtis Chapman, right? Bring it on. It's like that's like the perfect. Mike picked out the song. I picked it out and went right with this. 
because we're, we're going to call all joy as you sit there and yell us and debate us, but we love you. We have joy. Sorry. <laughs> have joy today. I love you. That's why I have joy. So when we understand, and it's, um, like me, when I understood his sacrifice, that's when I finally repented. You know what I'm saying? Not because Mike said so or because Christ said so, but I took a hard look at the person of Jesus and his sacrifice and his work towards me that he cared when before I didn't think he cared. So uh, when I understand his sacrifice, or we understand, we, us, uh, we can uh, turn our hearts and call to Jesus in the time for salvation and today is the day of salvation and we can receive peace like I talked about last week and joy where we try to get it from everything else before and nothing filled that void we, we say over and over and over that the puzzle piece is the last piece in our hearts and it's shaped like Jesus and we're stuffing motorcycles in there and booze and drugs and women you know what I'm saying? Political correctness and DIY or DIE or whatever they're calling it. You know, and diversity. And we're trying to stuff that stuff. And none of that stuff is going to give you joy. That's going to cause you more stress and more stress and more stress. Because you are not, you can debate me all day and hope to change my mind, but you cannot make my joy of Jesus Christ and sharing with you the love of God through Jesus Christ fade with your opinion and your counter argument. You're going to make yourself sick. But whenever you figure out how it is Jesus loves you so much that he died for you and he did something, when you start figuring out, you can turn to Christ and Christ alone and give you peace. Not religion. Not really. Religion is cutting off heads, lighting candles. That's all religion. Uh, even the clubs go to church on Tuesday. They call it, they call it church. Uh, so we can have salvation today when we turn, and we can have peace, and we can have joy, and, and we can go about. We don't have to put ourselves in situations, like we say about earlier about going on vacation, but when we run into it while we're out and about, okay, you know, we, I have the joy, I have full-time joy as a child. Ooh, that's the, that's, that's the one thing about it, as a Think about little kids. We were around little kids, man. And, uh, we, when we ate breakfast the other morning, brother, that little bitty girl, she's just bouncing everywhere. And we're at the hotel eating breakfast, and all these, all this family was there. And I said, you know, we at church we call them aisle fairies because they run up and down the aisle. You know, it's just a joy, man. And she went to leave. I was like, I was like, adios, mija. Oh, mi corazón. You know, my heart. You know, and they all laughed, and <laughs> the little girl didn't get it, but. You know, just joy. And <clears throat> I'm not going to be the kind of person to just huss and puss because someone can't control their kid. That would be you robbing my joy. Right? Little kids, are, they do little kid things. Well, unrepented sinners, like Pastor says, cows moo, dogs bark, sinners sin. You do sinner things. You, do, you are a person missing the mark. But you are not your sin. And today you can turn from the darkness, turn into the light of God, and start at least throwing your darts in the correct. You might not hit the bullseye every time, but you can at least start throwing towards the person of Jesus and living a joyful life. Praise God. So in this uh, <clears throat> definition I give real quick, I like my study Bible. Uh, fullness of joy, Christ's likeness. Jesus points the way to joy. A, a divine quality of character that is possessed and given only by God. It is rooted in relationship with the Holy Spirit. You got, to really receive it, you got to be born again. He's, 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 we talk about Jesus, it says right here, he's pointing the way to joy. The way is to be born again, and then you're then you have it rooted in a relationship now with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is rooted in you. That's why I say being born again messes up, doesn't mess up my sinning. Sinning messes up my peace. I have the gifts of the Holy Spirit in me. So when, when sinning stuff comes around me, 
I'm not mad at you for still acting like the way you do. I just wish you wouldn't because there is a joy there that can replace it. And we can just uh, divorce that. <clears throat> so not in earthly or material things. I talked about that. Christ-like joy is seen in the description of his, being Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Joy is derived from the confidence that the price of dying to our will holds the inevitable certainty of eventually realizing the triumph of his joy. So like I said, whenever we finally get his joy, we can have victory and triumph over things that aren't causing us joy. But if you're still picking, if you're still picking up a rattlesnake hoping it won't bite you, that's your own fault. We, there are certain things we don't need to be, be, do or be around. <clears throat> but like I said, when we're out and about, things happen. There's a difference. For Jesus brings sons and daughters into fellowship with the Father. <clears throat> and that was Jesus' delight. That was Jesus' joy. So his joy that wants to remain in us is for us to be light in the darkness. If my life still looks like a wretched train wreck, but I call myself a believer in Jesus... It's not Jesus' fault, it's not the Holy Spirit's fault, and it's not God's fault. It's my own fault. Because I am looking at it in a wrong fashion. But today I can repent. Say, I'm sorry, Father. Please let me go deeper into your word and leave people alone for, for a while. Change my speech. Why do you think Jesus walked away so much and wouldn't, wouldn't just stay with the Father? You know, I, we tease, and a lot of people say, well, people are no good. I can't stand people. I don't want to be around people. But Jesus wasn't saying that. That's what we say in our flesh. What Jesus was saying, I, I need to go be with my father so I can contend and bring compassion and peace back to people. Because these people are argumentative in their spirit or they're argumentative in their flesh. They want to do whatever they want. They don't want to receive the truth. And it's making me, because he was fully God and fully man, that means Jesus could get upset. But he chose not to. He chose peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness. Right? So even he, so Pastor Mark always says, Jesus took naps. Be like Jesus. Take naps. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to go. You're driving me nuts. I love you. I got to go be with God and his word. I don't care what your opinion is no more. I don't care what you would think I need to do. I don't care whatever. Because I don't want to be Gus anymore. I want to be the risen image of, of Christ in me. A believer and follower. You know, I don't say Christian because <clears throat> that's a loaded, that's a loaded term right there. We're talking about that. The word Christian comes from the Jew, from the Romans, and the, it comes from oh, look at you little Christs. So the term of looking down your nose at people is because the Romans have really big noses, and that's where that term comes down. Looking at uh, you're looking down your nose at me. Well, they look down their nose at believers and gave them an insult. The word Christian is an insult. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm a believer and a follower. That's why I rarely use that term anymore. Because uh, believers believe what this word says and followers follow what this word says. Now, that's what they were doing because they were believing and they were following. But the term is derogatory. It's like, anyway, it's an ugly word in his content. But whenever we understand his sacrifice and we get full of his joy, we then uh, desire what it says here, the true traits of the Messiah and the true food that he wishes to give and the true living water which he wishes to give. Like I was saying last week about the woman at the well, he gave that, I don't know if I said it, but I know it was, it was, I was there at first, the woman at the well maybe, maybe I was talking about last week, but I talked about it a lot, but I know during this week, while studying and listening, he gave me that first because she was not her sin. He didn't, he pointed it out, but he didn't say that's you because all she had to do was divorce her water pot and walk away from it and not do it no more. And she ran off and talked about Jesus, right? What did we tell that person the other day? God's good, Jesus or Jesus is good, devil bad. Go tell somebody. I mean, <laughs> that that woman had no theology. She had no she had no Bible to study. Right? 
she knew that the Messiah one day would come. She knew that. She she heard him. He spoke to her heart. She she uh, chose to walk away from everything she had before. Why can't we do that? Why are we struggling today? Well, praise God for His Word today. Uh, like I said, uh, I've been just—it's just been a week of joy, uh, even with the, the joy of working with my brother on this house. Uh, you know, he, he did more than I thought today, or yes, he did more than I thought was going to get done. And he, he wrote me a text message of all the extra work that he did. Praise God, full of joy. Huh? You know, and when we have it, we can have it even while we're are falling into various trials. And, you know, if you ever hit a pothole on your bike, you know, sometimes you can bend the front wheel if you have a spoke wheel. And you might hit it really hard, but I know, I know all the spots between here and Tucson where the road's rough, like right there near the thing coming down the hill from Texas Canyon, and there's a curve in the right lane right there above that big sign they built, that piece of road is garbage. I avoid it. I may hit it once, but I don't go in the right lane no more right there. <laughs> uh, there was another little spot they fixed it finally. When you come around a corner up there on I-10, and uh, sure enough, there was a hole there, and they finally fixed it. They've tore up all the roads in I-10 in Tucson. And one of the first uh, exits there, there was a big old hole right in the middle. I mean, I mean, but it was, for a car, it was not that big, but it was like that. And that's big enough for a front tire. Yep. You don't back them up. You don't back up your bike, hit the exit, turn around, come around, and get back on the highway again and hit it again, do you? We're not that dumb. We don't do that. <laughs> Why do we do the same things over and over and over? I'm not saying, and that's what this verse is saying. It's not saying while you choose in your flesh to still act and talk the way you did, it's a trial. That's lack of surrender. It's saying that if you stub your toe and, and word comes out, you've fallen into a various trial. There's a huge difference. Right? Jesus overturned tables when he was angry. He, had, he showed us that he was also a man. He could be angry. Right? Uh, but he didn't go about all the time knowing what he knew thinking that everyone he's going to run into between between his ministry time and the cross, if they were scumbags and going to do him wrong one day. That's what we do. And we choose that over and over. And that's not a trial. That's a character trait. And that's what that definition says. The character of God is not acting like we used to. If you're still cussing and fussing, that's your character. And when did you ever bury the old man? Like I said that one time, we will dig up the old man but I have to go get the shovel of self and dig it up. But if I'm still acting like self, I've never buried it. I've never understood being buried in Christ and being risen in Christ. Because if I did, I would have joy even when I have to deal with people who, who want to contend with me with an opposite opinion of what joy really looks like. You cannot tell me there's a better thing on earth that will give me more joy than knowing God and Jesus and his word and my brothers and sisters in Christ. There's nothing else going to give me more joy. Nothing. No race cars, no booze, and no anger. We're, we're talking so much about the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh step lately. It's really also taught me about that. That's what we're sharing. Whenever we have to make a list of our character defects, it's because our character de defects never brought any joy. So would I want to get rid of them? We teach that in AA. Well, the Bible is the same way. The way I acted before with my mouth and my attitude and my, uh, my sexual immorality, I was seeking to have a good time. I have a good time with my friends. We run around and run and gun and, right? Chase women. And, right? We think we're having fun and we're, we're, and we're fulfilling joy. But what we're doing, we're stuffing stuff in a hole that looks like Jesus and will never fit. <clears throat> so today I need to be like the woman at the well and divorce that stuff. I've got, this is my third wife. I divorced the other two. I don't want them back. And I gotta look at my old life and my old speech and my old character. 
the same way because none of that stuff caused joy. We say in AA, your best thinking got you to the tables of AA. And your best character got you to God. The best way you were acting got you in so much trouble. I'm not talking about like, like wild trouble, but maybe tr trouble with loved ones because you couldn't be around nobody because you're a raging jerk like I was. And your best character got you to the character of God and the word of God that helped give you the medicine, the free gift of the medicine at the Cancer Research Center of Jesus Christ and the word to be washed white with the word of God. So you cannot tell me, you cannot debate me at all on any point with science or whatever that there's anything else that's going to give me better joy. Because every time science sticks a shovel in the dirt, they find Jesus. They find God. Right now, I just watched a video. <clears throat> the Saudi prince. I can show you on a map, but where Egypt's at, and there's that peninsula in the Red Sea. It's like a triangle right there, and there's a big chunk of Saudi Arabia. Right there, right down the middle, they're going to take... They're, they're building it. They've already got the... They've already have a mass assembled the workers. So instead of building a city out this way, I don't know if you watch any futuristic show movies like Judge Dredd where the cities are built up this way. They've taken that concept and they're gonna start building a mega city, but in a wall. I don't know why they're about to build a wall. A giant wall, brother, that stretches from the, whatever ocean it is, right? So it's Egypt, you know, Africa, that little, that little triangle, and the, the Red Sea's right here, and then the rest of the peninsula, peninsula of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. That, that, it's right there where the mountain of God is at, where the, where the, the real, uh, uh, what's it called? Moses in the mountain, where he's, Jones of the Rock. There, right? I guess where uh, uh, the top is black, where it was on fire, what it says when Moses visited God, get the 10 tablets. <laughs> And everything, they're building a giant wall, yeah, Mount Sinai, right through the middle of it. But it's a city. It's a, I mean, are they going to start overpopulating? How are you going to put that many people in there? What are they going to do for work? I guess all the jobs and everything, you know what I'm saying, will be included, but it's, it's narrow. It's like a wall, dude, but it's, I, I think it's like maybe 10 city blocks long. No, no wider than Wilcox, maybe? Or four Wilcoxes, maybe? You know what I'm saying? Not big, or like Tucson? Not big, dude. Not, but straight up, and a wall on your side, and you're inside of it. Crazy. They're building it now, right through the heart of where all the things of God and Moses happened in that Sinai Peninsula. They're building it right now. <clears throat> And these people know, what's funny, is they have a counterpoint to what Exodus says. They'll tell you every time that they don't believe in what the book of Exodus says, but uh, there are hieroglyphs in this area. The top of the mountain is black where it was on fire, like it says in Exodus, in, the, in you know, those parts of the Bible there. And... Uh, uh, on the rock, I've seen these pictures before. The U.S. military goes there once a year. It's called the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, uh, like, I forget, it's, it's a joint effort. And once a year, different army groups like the 101st or 10th Mountain or these, they go there and guard that area. There's fences around it. There's hieroglyphs on the rocks of cows. There's sacrificial altar areas down at the basins. Uh, that's where the giant rock is at that Moses split. It's all in that area. And all of, and that's right where they're building. All this, They have an opinion that the book of Exodus is not true. And you know why, and you know why they hold on to that area so much? Because it says in Exodus that wherever their feet prints are out, that is where the Israelites own that property. And that's not over, Israel's way up here at the top of Africa, right? You have Egypt, right 
you have that, that big triangle, the Red Sea and the Sinai Peninsula is over here, where it's at, all right through here. Well, how can Israelites own something with all desert? How are you gonna put footprints in desert? Well, there's pictures I can show it to you, you can look it up. The, uh, they carved their feet, <laughs> like when you make a turkey at Thanksgiving on your hand, they carved their feet in the rock. And the, and the Saudi Arabians know that. They have an opposite opinion, right, of what the Word of God says, but they believe at the same time they got to do something to keep the Israelites out of what God promised them. They're not going to believe the Word, but they're going to build a walled city right through the middle at the same time. If that's not ego and pride and anti-God, I don't know what is. And that's happening today. They're already doing it. And that's what's happening in the world, in our world, in the, in the great town of Wilcox, Arizona. People will tell you that the God is not real with an opinion other than what this says. But at the same time, hold dear to certain things of what this says. <laughs> Thou shalt not kill. So you don't believe none of this? So I can just club you over the head and, just, and, and we're supposed to all be okay with it? <laughs> no. Oh, why can't I? That's what this says not to do. Well, it's just a moral right thing to do. Where do you get your morals from? Because you have nothing to do with morals. It has to do with sin. It has to do with antichristness. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't want the things of God. They'll have a counter opinion. But at the same time, they believe enough of it, they'll build a giant walled city. <laughs> Praise God, man. We, that's why I say to joy today is because it is inside of us. And uh, praise God, that's what we need in our lives, right? We need the joy of God in our lives because without it, let me turn this off. Because uh, without it, we're just spinning our heels, man, going around in circles, just, just full of rage and discontent and, and opposite opinions. And there's just no joy in that. So we just want to share with you today that God loves you. No matter what your opinion of God is. God did a work for to cure all things. Jesus Christ went about doing good and uh, healing all of those who are oppressed by the devil. God is not oppressing you by making your mama sick. If God was making your mama sick, then Jesus would be out of the will of the Father because it would be God's will for your mama to be sick. But Jesus went about doing good and healing everybody who was oppressed by the devil. So God's not out to get you. God's not a whack-a-mole God. God has done every work for you today to get out of your mess. If you are still in a mess with your speech or your character, that's your fault. It's not God's fault. So that's what Pastor was saying yesterday. He says it a lot. God is right. The Word of God is right. And I was the other thing. <laughs> the way he puts it. <laughs> and that's Pastor Paul giving you grace Right? Because Jesus looked at the Roman and he says, and Jesus said, say, I'm right. I'm the word of God. Thou shalt not kill. You know? And you are a Roman gonna drive nails through my hands one day. You're the other thing. And I don't care what your opinion of me is. Even while I lay on that cross, I will say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> That's why you cannot. Convince me otherwise that this word that this word is wrong in any in any fashion. So let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we do have the joy that you set before was set before you that can be in us because joy is of the fruit. I'm not trying to make fruit. You are the vine. I am the branch that abides in you, and our relationship together with the Holy Spirit inside of me is like the watering, the living water through the branch. Oh, praise God, into the fruit that bears, Holy Father God. It's not my work. It's just my loving desire to be in you because your loving desire is to be amongst us, Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit. I thank you for my brothers and sisters today, Lord God. We uplift this place of employment to you, Heavenly Father God. And we just promise in your son's name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm.